So let's talk about the power series solutions near an ordinary point. So here's our example. We have a differential equation and we want to find the power series solutions centered at x not equal to zero. So our solution is going to have the following form. We have y is equal to the sum n equals zero to infinity of a n x minus x naught to the power n. Now because x naught is zero, we can reduce this to uh, the sum starting at n equals zero to infinity a n x to the power n. And if I were to write out a couple of terms, we have a zero plus a one x plus a two x squared plus a three x cubed and so forth. So we're really looking for what are these coefficients for this particular example. So let's go ahead and start. So our expression must involve first derivative and second derivative. So we're gonna go ahead and differentiate y. So y prime is going to be the sum starting at n equals one to infinity n times a n x to the n minus one. And then if I differentiate that, we have the second derivative, which will be the sum starting at n equals two to infinity n times n minus one a n x to the power n minus two. So these are the expressions for first and second derivative. Now we plug these into our given differential equation, which is y double prime plus x y prime plus 2y equals to zero. So if I plug these in, I have, so the first term is going to be the sum starting at n equals two to infinity of n times n minus one, a n x to the n minus two, plus now I have x times the first derivative. So we have the sum starting at n equals one to infinity of n times a n x to the n minus one. And our last term, it's gonna be two times y. So it's gonna be the sum starting at n equals zero to infinity a n x to the n equals to zero. So that's how you set up any differential equations where you're looking for the power series solutions. So now we just need to use some properties of summation to kind of combine and play around with it until we get a recurrence relation that would give us all the coefficients. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna fix my powers of x. So, um, so for the second summation, I can push the x inside and combine it with that x to the n minus one power. That way we can combine those terms. So, so I will do that for the middle one. So we have the sum starting at n equals one to infinity n times a n x to the, now as I push the x inside, my power for x will just be n because this has a power one and that negative one will cancel out. And the last one, I can just push the two inside. We have two, well, if I push it inside, I have the sum starting at n equals zero to infinity, two times a n x to the n equals to zero. And I can just rewrite the first summation because that didn't change at all. So we have n equals zero to infinity n times n minus one, a n x to the n minus two. All right. Um, so, uh, so it looks like I made a typo right here with the first summation. The n should start at two. So um, let me just quickly fix that. n is starting at two. And then the second one starts at one and the last one starts at zero. All right, so now I'm going to uh, try to get the same power for all the x's we have. I want this to be the same power as this one and as this one. So we're going to shift the indices. So let's introduce a dummy variable. So I'm going to introduce k. So like k be equal to the power of x, which is n minus two. For the second one, let k be equal to n. The third one, let k be equal to also n. So if I do that, well now I'm able to shift my indices. So for the first one, my sum will now start at, if n is equal to two, k is going to be zero. So starts at zero to infinity, 
and then n is going to be k plus 2, n minus 1 is going to be k plus 1, a sub k plus 2, x to the k. The second one and the third one doesn't change, we're just rewriting with our dummy variable k. So we have plus the sum starting at n equals 1 to infinity k, a sub k, x to the k, plus the sum starting at k equals 0 to infinity of 2 times a sub k, x to the k equals to 0. Well, now let's see if we can combine these into a single summation. We can almost, but it looks like we need to write out one of the term for the first summation and one of the term from the last summation so that they all can start at, uh, my bad, here k goes to 1 for k equals 1. So we're going to let k equals 0 for the first one and then we can start at the k equals 1. So if I write out the first term, the zeroth term, we have k is equal to 0, so we have 2 times 1 times a sub 2, x to the 0 is 1. So now this summation can start at k equals 1. Now second one is fine, but the third one, I can also like k equals 0. So I have 2 times a sub 0, x to the 0 is 1, plus now they can all start at k equals 1. So this one is coming from this guy when k is equal to 0. This term is coming from this summation when k is equal to 0. So I wrote out the first term from the first sum and the second sum. Now they all start at k equals 1, so I can join them into a 1 summation. So when I join them, I can also pull out x to the k because they all have that in common. So we're left with k plus 2, k plus 1, a sub k plus 2 plus k a sub k plus 2 a sub k everything times x to the k equal to 0. Great. So this is pretty good now. So now we were going to equate the coefficient. So think of it as you have 0 constant on this side and then plus 0 uh, x to the k term plus 0. Everything is there on the right hand side. So I can equate the constant term to 0, which means I have 2 times a2 plus 2a0 equals to 0. So that's one equation. And then the only way the summation can be 0 is if the coefficient of x to the k is equal to 0. So I'm going to let k plus 2, k plus 1, a sub k plus 2, plus k a sub k plus 2a sub k equals to 0. So from the first equation we have, we can solve for let's say a sub 2. I can reduce it by 2, so I have a sub 2 is equal to negative a sub 0. And then the second one, again we solve for the highest subscript, which happens to be this piece right here. So we subtract k a sub k and 2 a sub k, so we have a sub k plus 2 is equal to negative k a sub k minus 2 a sub k over k plus 2 k plus 1. So that is the recurrence formula, but we're going to simplify this. Looks like this can be simplified further. So I can pull out a negative 1, so I have k plus 2 and then times a sub k over k plus 2 and k plus 1, and then I can cancel these factors. So my re recurrence relation is really nice. a sub k plus 2 is equal to negative a sub k over k plus 1. So that's a simplified recurrence relation. Now let's, let's backtrack a little bit. So, so you see how we got this equation right here? So let me just highlight that quickly. So this guy is right here. Now we don't really need them. We don't really need them. We can just throw the sum at 1 and continue, or we can really ignore the indexing because it's not really necessary. All we need is the recurrence relation, which we can get it from right here. So this is important. That's why it's okay when you started the problem, you could have ignored the indexing because at the end you just want the recurrence relation. Everything before that will just give you extra terms like these ones, 
we can get them from this formula right here. For example, say I want to get A2 because this is A sub 2. I can get that from my recurrence by just simply setting k equal to 0. I have A sub 2, which would be negative A0 over 1, which is simply negative A0. So there you go. That's exactly what we got right there. So that's why it's okay to ignore these. So that way we don't have a lot of work to do for this kind of problem. All right, just wanted to mention that very quickly. So now that I have my formula to get the coefficients, let's find a couple of coefficients. So I found a sub two, which happens to be negative a sub zero. If I let k equal one, I can find a sub three, which would be negative a sub one over one plus one, that's two. So that's my a sub three. And then I can go for just maybe one more. K is equal to two, I have a sub four, which would be negative a sub two over two plus one, that's three. Now I can rewrite a sub two in terms of my previous term, which was right here. A sub two is negative a zero. So I can really write this as negative, negative a zero over three, which is simply a zero over three. So a sub four is a sub zero over three. And if you wanna go for more terms, go ahead, but I think this is good enough. So we know our solution is going to be a zero plus a one x plus a two x squared plus a three x cubed plus a four x to the four plus and so on. So let's plug in these coefficients. So y is equal to, well, a0 and a1 are arbitrary constants, so I'm going to rewrite the other ones in terms of a0 and a1. So a0 is just a0, a1, x plus, now a2, that happens to be negative a0. So this would be negative a0, x squared. a3 is negative a1 over 2, x cubed. And then a4 happens to be positive a0 over 3 x to the fourth plus and so on. Now if you want you can write this out really nicely by collecting terms with a0 and a1. So I'm just going to factor out the terms with a0 and rewrite. So I have 1 and then uh, the third term also has a0 so that would be x squared. Fourth term no, the fifth term does. So that will be plus one third x to the fourth. And there are probably more ahead. And then plus, now I can rewrite the terms involving a1. So the term that involves a1 are this one, this one, and there's probably more. So let's go ahead and rewrite those and factor out an a1. So we have a1 times x minus one half x cubed plus so on. So there you have your series solution to this problem. And if you want to just double check, this is a second order. So we have two independent solution. So this can be think of as y1 is a series solution. This can be thought of as y2. So our solution is really a0 times y1 plus a2 times y2. So we have two independent series solution. Together we have the general solution with the constant A0 and A1. All right, so um, this is it. I hope this idea makes sense. See you next time.